Hello everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. We've got Sean here working with me on this video. Everyone. Right, so today um, it's just a little explanation on the materials that we use to make wardrobes. We've got three main ones, MDF, veneer and birch. So veneer, we generally use oak veneer. We're going to go over a few of the details, prices and other bits and pieces in no particular order, to be honest. We're just going to have a little chat about the materials plus points, negative points, if we can remember. Um, basically, I've got a couple of bits written down on some scraps of paper, things that I can remember. It's a bit of an off-the-cuff video. Today is all about um, the materials that we use and what we personally like and loads of other stuff. So without going on, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, like and subscribe. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so first things first, we're going to talk about prices because MDF is quite a lot cheaper than oak veneer and, yeah, and birch. Birch is the most expensive. Oak veneer comes in second, not far off birch. MDF is well off. It's like probably a third of the price. So quickly before I go on, um, I'm going to go over 6mm, 12mm, 18mm, 25mm um, through um, for MDF, oak, veneer and birch. So with the MDF, um, 6 mil is 18 pounds, 12 mil is 26 pounds, 18 mil is 34 pounds and 25 mil is 61 pounds. This is standard MDF. I haven't done the MR MDF or any other fancy MDF. We generally only use standard because with our airless sprayers we get a really good finish and I have done comparisons between MR MDF, moisture resistant, with standard MDF and by the time I've sprayed it sanded it back and brought it back in and done the final top coats, I haven't noticed anything different. So this is the reason I still use standard MDF, which is a lot cheaper. MR MDF comes in a third, uh, around a third of the price, more expensive than standard. Oak veneer, we always use oak veneer because it's the most common and it gives you a nice grain in, in any um, color oil. I'm gonna show you those in a bit. So it's plus one mil on the standard MDF sizes, okay, because you've got the veneer on. 7 mil is 62 pounds, 13 mil is 73 pounds, 19 mil is 83 pounds, and I couldn't get a price on 26 mil from my supplier, but it's going to be in the 100 and something pound mark. So birch ply comes in 1 mil, around 1 mil less than the MR sizes, so it's, it sometimes comes in like 5.5, doesn't it, on the backings. 12 mil always comes out thinner. Um, we always notice on the 25 mil that it comes in 24 mil. So anyway, just be aware of that. <clears throat> so birch, 6 mil is 56 pounds. Um, 12 mil is 95 pounds. 18 mil is a staggering 150 pounds. Compare that to the 34 pounds of the, M of the um, MDF. It's four, without doing calculations, it's four and a bit times the price of MDF. And 25 mil um, birch is 165 pounds. So if you're doing a huge project, we did one not long ago, didn't we? Yeah, that yeah. yeah, yeah, we did one which was uh, four meters wide, had, had floor to ceiling of doors, eight doors, or ten doors. Ten doors. Yeah, and this nearly cost me two thousand pounds in materials if I had bought them out. Um, just around COVID time, I bought two pallets worth of uh, forty-four sheets of eighteen mil, and I got them for sixty-six pounds a sheet back back in the day, two and a half years ago. Sean, you're good with dates when was COVID, two and a bit years? Yeah. Two and a bit years ago, 66 quid, and now I can't get them any cheaper than 150 mil, and I can't guarantee what quality they are, whether they're BB, um, what quality they're actually going to be. They might not be the best quality. You might get one decent face and one balancer face. So it's a lot. So if you are doing a huge project and um, you, you just got to take into account the prices, they're going to be huge for Birch. And not too much, not too far off for the oak veneer. The oak veneer you've got edging too. Um, oak veneer is generally the cheapest veneer to buy because it's the most common. You've got walnut, you've got pine, you've got ash, all the types of species of wood. But we go for oak because it just gives you a nice grain when you put the oil on. Um, again, we're going to go through those. So they're the prices. Just bear in mind that when you are pricing up a job, MDF is so much cheaper than all the others. But there are other bits to take into account like construction, 
paint finishes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is why we are going over this right now. All right, so we're going to be talking about, in no particular order, um, about all the materials, okay, bullet points that I've got. So first, first thing is cutting. Yeah, so MDF is easy to cut. Easy to cut, yeah. It's softer, it goes through the, the, the board a lot quicker. Um, when you are cutting, though, it can go fluffy, so you've got to be aware of all those fluffy edges. If you are machining and molding into an MDF edge, standard MDF especially, it's going to take a while to sand those out, fill it, paint it, sand it until it becomes nice and smooth. If you do invest a little bit more in MR MDF or other brands such as Fincel, which is really, really expensive gear, it will machine lovely. So birch ply is quite hard to cut, isn't it? You always need a nice sharp blade. Oh, yeah. yeah. And when you do cut through birch ply, if your blade isn't um, completely lovely and sharp, you will get the saw cuts in a couple of burns. So they take a lot longer to sand. So when we do our stacking technique, as you can see here, we've done a stacking technique on all the MDF. If you want to have a look at the video of how we treat all the edges, it's up at the top right now. We do the same for birch um, ply also, when we need to get all those edges up. If it's a whole wardrobe, we need to stack it all up so we can hit all those front edges first. But it's a lot harder to sand up, isn't it? Yeah, so when you're sanding, it can take you, it could take you a good hour to do a whole pack. So Sean's asked for some P60. I haven't got any P60 yet because we've been using, P80. yeah, P80 is a bit of a killer, isn't it? Yeah, P80, it takes a lot longer. So you're sanding those edges up. You, basically, you're on the P80 for a long time, aren't you? Yeah. Before you, you know, you check all those edges, making sure all the saw cuts and any imperfections are out of those birch ply edges. It is really tough stuff. Um, and then you can move on to the P120 and the 240 only once you've got those saw cuts out. So you just got to be aware of that. It takes a lot longer to uh, sand those edges up all the way around. Um, not only that, we've got faces to do as well. Okay, we'll go over those in a minute. So when you are sanding up MDF edges, they are pretty quick to sand. Yeah, quick to sand. You still use the 80? Yeah, still use the 80. And the 120 and the 240. 240. So your technique is basically go over all the 80, yeah. um, 120, 240. Yeah. Then go over it with some filler. Um, and then again, watch that video. And then you'll just go back. What do you do once you've got the filler on? What, what grade do you do next? Do 240. 240. And then it just takes that ready mix filler off yeah. and it just is really, really smooth. But you can do the whole pack. Or to be fair, if you've got packs going all the way around, you can do that in, in literally no time at all. Maybe 45 minutes to do a whole wardrobe to work. Yeah. yeah. And you get really nice edges. As you can see here, it's completely flawless, really. really. Um, once he's done that, he'll just put two coats of primer undercoat on there and then they are literally ready to machine. Um, so the speed difference between birch ply and MDF is a lot different in preparing those edges. The oak veneer is a little bit different from that because um, as long as you haven't got any big saw cuts on it, remember we're going to be edging those edges, um, that, that oak veneer edging will cover those so you don't really need to stack, we don't stack those up do we? Legend. Yeah, so once they're cut, they're ready to yeah, put edging. Legend, yeah. yeah, so when it comes to faces, um, MDF is simple as well. So once we cut a sheet, when it comes from the factory, it's generally pretty smooth anyway, but we generally won't be happy with that. It needs a P240. It's also a little bit longer when it comes to oak veneer and birch. You've got to really take your time on it with this, especially you don't want to go through that top layer of oak veneer or whatever veneer you've got. I and mean, you just got to go take it easy. We use 120, yeah, 120. and 240 on, on the veneers. Yeah, on the veneers. And on the birch, you so use the same? Yeah. 120 so and 240. They scratch well. Yeah, so they do scratch quite easily. So if you're sliding them on top of each other or you get them in from a delivery company that they don't really give a crap what um, they look like, they'll be sliding them off. They'll be putting them in their vans and... With a bit of luck, they haven't come damaged, but you might get a little scratch that does take a while to come out. Um, so you are going to take a lot longer to get those scratches out or imperfections out on um, a grained bit of veneer or birch. Whereas MDF, if it's got a scratch, it's just a tiny bit of ready mix filler on there, or you can just simply sand them out with 240. Yeah. It's, it's 30 seconds on that whole board a minute, isn't it? So it's two or three times longer with the oak veneer or the birch, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, in preparing to be able to start machining your components up ready for finish. ready for the finish, exactly. Also, I want to say that if you have got a chip on uh, um, MDF, 
you could just put a bit of two pack in there or something like that. Um, it's repairable um, because you're going to put a finish over the top. Whereas if it's a piece of open ear or birch, you probably don't really stand any chance. You have to replace the part or be a bit sneaky or where you're going to put that part. For example, if it's chipped on one face, you can say, okay, well, that's the top of a wardrobe. We're going to have that on the unseen face. Yeah. So you've got pick and choose, but then you've got veneers to sort of worry about as well. So that chip face might have been on the good face. Good face, and then they give you yeah. a rubbish face, don't they? Yeah, like a balancer. A balancer that's it. Yeah, unless you're going to get really expensive materials, yeah. you generally get one good face and one bad face. Yeah, yeah so that's a good point there, Sean. Um, all right, other bits I've got in my notes is that um, birch um, or veneered um, sheet material needs to be good quality. Okay, it, it can also be hard to find somebody who supplies that at a good cost. Um, there's not many suppliers out. It's hard to come by nowadays. I think it's just down to the wall. As far as I know, a lot of the sheet materials come from that direction of the world. So um, getting especially ply is pretty tricky. Um, so when you are buying from a supplier, you just, you know, without paying stupid money, you just don't know what quality you're getting, especially from my supplier. I go to Moran's because, you know, it is, it's a reasonable cost, but it's reasonable quality too. To be honest, it's, it is good quality, but every now and then they give you something that you don't like, so you have to take it back. And, you know, when it comes to quality, you know, you're probably going to be paying through the nose for good quality boards. Yeah. Talking about the veneers, okay, so when it comes to machining um, or making doors especially, you've got a large project and you, you're making a good few carcasses, for example, or lots of shelves within them. You want all the grains to sort of relatively match. You don't want different tones of yeah. the veneer because sometimes you get pinky grains in the veneer. You might get more tan color tones on the oak, all different tones, and uh, that with a birch too. Yeah, it can be hard to sort of match those. So when you are buying, it's hard to get maybe 10, 15 sheets that are all the same. So it does take a lot longer to stack them up, especially if you haven't got a large space like this. We stack our boards up on that, that back wall. Yeah, that Match, match them the yeah and we can be on that an hour can't we even yeah. just talking about it and just going okay well look at our cutting list how do we get those out right that can be for all of this if you have a look at this look i've written on the back of a cutting list okay my layouts now this is what we do so we have loads of these um for each job especially veneers where um we use um max cut i think it's called i'll leave a link in the description it's fantastic and it just gives you the layout. Um, so we go through these and every, everything's got a place on the board. So we go, okay, well, where does that side and that side go? They need to be on the same board because it's one carcass. So what I'm trying to say is matching the grains, especially over large projects and especially doors where you've got maybe six, eight doors in a row. You can't, it, it would just look absolutely rubbish if the grains don't match all their different tones. The tone is the most important thing, the color. Grain you can sometimes get away with um, if you're clever and the way you put them put them side by side, etc. So that is one thing I wanted to say is is time goes into matching and all that soft sort of stuff. Whereas MDF, you just pick it up, you cut it, you sand those edges, and then you just you're just banging through the machine and really quickly you can draw your pencil lines on there. You don't even need to sand the pencil lines off; they just get painted and they're in the spray room um but the finishing does take a bit longer we're going to go over that in a bit okay one other thing that sean mentioned is the, the project that we did hopefully i'll leave a picture up there now of birch ply i, I think i did mention it been a minute ago it is it was ridiculously expensive wasn't it yeah. the reason i made a, a semi-decent profit on it is because i bought this material in two and a half years ago so you know, it is a lot more. So when you are doing a small wardrobe, maybe might be a meter, you know, there's profit to be made there quite easily. But when you're just um, doing a huge project with MDF, I feel you can make a lot more profit. OK, with the birch, not so much unless you've got a customer with big pockets. Um, sometimes it is what it is. You've got to put your prices out there and, um, you know, you've got to make money at the end of the day. Materials prices are what they are, but if you're doing a four meter birch one like you did, like we did, yeah. you're giving them a five, six, seven thousand pound cost for this big thing um, because the materials are so expensive. Sometimes it is what it is and, you know, you may not get the job because of it. Probably being a bit random here. 
going off off topic. Um, yeah, but it does really add up those costs. Yeah. Whereas the MDF, it, it stays down. Stays down yeah. More yeah, yeah, more profit. Um, I think if we're comparing an oak veneer, which is the medium range cost, to an MDF, I'd say the MDF would probably be uh, just over a third cheaper than the than the veneer. Yeah. Whereas the MDF would be maybe a fifth of the cost of birch in relation to costs, most likely. Right, we're going to talk about installation now. So um, when it comes to installing, um, we find loading in the van easier with the with what? With the um, birch and the veneers. Birch and the veneers. Yeah, we use water-based paints, and um, that's all we use. I know with other types of paints like PU paints, you like put, uh, put through a HVLP sprayer, HVLP. Um, they set, so they got hardener, etc. So they're like diamond finish. Not saying our eggshell isn't hard, but <clears throat> what I'm trying to get at is our paint finish, you don't really want to stack paint to paint for a long period of time because it most likely is going to stick together. Um, so when it comes to loading in the van, I feel that the birch and the oak, Sean does too, is easier to stack. Yeah, stack, stack put a sheet in between. Yeah, you just, you, you just put it in, don't you? You just put one piece in, you stack that on and just make sure it's nice and level. You get it in your van, you put a ratchet strap over it. You've got a double-sided paint piece. Oh, they're nightmares, aren't they? Put a sheet in between. They're in the and the removal blankets are always not the right size. The removal blankets that we buy they're two meters by yeah. two point two. Yeah. But when we've got two point four, oh my god, the man the tires we've gone but in the van cursing. Why don't they make these removal blankets two point four? Pisses us off. Especially double-sided. It's like removal blanket in, fold over, removal blanket. Because we did try the paper once, yeah. and it's a faff, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, once you've finished it, you've got to get the roll out, fold it over, handy wrap it, and then even so, you've still got to be careful of it, stacking it in the van. Then do you keep the paper? Do you recycle it? Do you keep buying more? Do you fold it up and keep it? It takes ages to wrap up. Then when you're on site, it takes ages to unwrap and deal with the paper. So we find just putting it in the van straight away with um, the removal blankets, the quickest way. We, we're careful. We wear rubber gloves, getting it in the van, and also while we're fitting. Um, and yeah, which away we go, but it is slower. So uh, oak veneer or any veneer and birch, you could just stack them in, whereas painted, you need to wrap them up. Yeah. yeah so that's a pain in the ass. <clears throat> we find installing MDF slower than birch ply, don't we? Yeah. Um, we, that big, huge one that, um, I've been talking about, we fitted that in, a, in one day. It was a long day, wasn't it? It was like half seven? Half seven, seven. Half seven, 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. But we did it. That's the main thing. We did it. Whereas the painted, I don't think we would. Right. Because you've just got to be so much more careful the way you assemble things. You don't want to knock them. I know you don't want to knock any other materials. Yeah. But then you've got polished down with the painted. You've got to spray everything. You've got to clean it up at the ends. You've got to make sure you don't mark it when you put your hanging rails in, when you're putting your draw runners in. Um, you know, it's quite hard not to mark, yeah, especially touch-ups as well. Touch-ups, yeah, because it's hard to touch up with spray, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you can't. You've got to dab it on like that. Yeah, otherwise you if you brush marks, no, you brush, 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 brush. yeah, you notice it, don't you? Yeah. And that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, so yeah, it is a pain in the butt, and also when we cut trims, yeah. when you're drawing pencil lines on, you got to be careful where you're drawing your pencil lines on. Yeah. Put the track on. Then it gets all dusty, you're like, oh, look, it looks like a right mess, all that dust and all the pencil lines on your work. Then you dust it off and then you're like, you don't feel like the job is really getting anywhere until you finish the job and you polish down and you go, oh, and then you can breathe and go, oh, yeah, it's cleaned up nicely. Yeah. And you can relax and have a sigh, a sigh of relief, if you know what I mean. Where, whereas with the veneer and the birch, you just dust it off and it's, it's done. There's no polishing up or cleaning, it's finished. Yeah. So that was a pain in the ass. It's something to think about. Touch-ups is a pain as well. So you will get a, a, eventually get touch. You will need touch-ups. Always do every now and then. So when you finish the job, you're like, oh, no, I need to do all the touch-ups. Sean loads the van generally. Yeah. I'm there like fitting the handles or screwing them on yeah. or doing a bit of hoovering while Sean's doing that. And then I've got to juggle the touch-ups with any remaining jobs at the end. The, the veneer and the birch is different from that, I feel. It's just a more relaxed environment. 
um, fitting the job. All right, so getting down to what we prefer. I mean, there's reasons why we prefer different things, okay? So we prefer the preparation of MDF yeah. because it's you can just cut the board. You don't need to worry. There's no grains to match. You lay it on your bench, stack them up. Yeah. You do any filling and sanding that you need to do. And once it's got to this stage here, it, you pick, up piece of machine it. pick it up to piece of machine it, put it in the spray room ready, yeah. dust it down, put it in there, and it's done. Um, <clears throat> with the with the birch and that it's longer. So for that, you know, preparation to get it to the machining and to get it in there. Um, well, at least the MDF we prefer the MDF. Yeah. yeah. But then again, finishing takes longer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's longer. So if you haven't got a space to spray then I'd say forget about it. Unless you're making a wardrobe out of MDF and you're fitting it and you've got a painter, which most of the time, most people don't want that. They want a sprayed finish. They want it to be done. They don't want the decorator to come in and finish it. I personally wouldn't like to do that. i um, done it once or twice because I was forced to. But before I had the spray, I had um, trestles outside, like trestles and ladders, maybe 20 different trestles. So we stacked all our work up on like ladders, and I was rollering with a nine inch roller for a day and a half, two days, just constantly rollering. And it took an age. So the spray room, if you don't have the space, then maybe you probably won't like the finishing sides. It'd just be a pain in the ass for you. But because we have got the space, I mean, I, I do make profit on the spraying side and it doesn't take too long for me to spray a whole wardrobe. It's just, it's labor. That's all. It's picking up a piece, it's spraying it. It's moving around, but the downside is once it's had its first coat, it comes in yeah. and then it's got to be sanded back, dusted down and brought back in. But once that's done and it's back in there after it's been sanded, it gets its final two coats and then it's ready. When it's ready to go, when we're about to fit it, we just take it straight out of the spray room into the van. So with the finishing side of the veneer and the birch, um, we find it quite easy. Yeah. Um, all the preparation is done by that point, all the hard job of sanding all those edges and um, sanding all the faces is done by that point. That's the long process. But then it's, it's relatively nice to just finish all your woodworking, clear the bench off and just have a few relaxing days of oiling. Maybe not even that. It depends how big the job is. But with a finish on um, birch or veneer, um, it's generally just one coat of Osmo, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, one coat is one coat is plenty, and, it's and then it's finished, yeah. and it's done, and then it's an easy stack in the van. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I mean, if I'm gonna just put a conclusion to this, I suppose we need to. Before I do, um, I will show you some samples in a moment. Okay, I'm just gonna go through a few bits and just show you them at least before I finish the video. My conclusion is, I make more profit on a painted MDF wardrobe. I make less on the veneer and the birch, um, but then again, it's, um, it's, it's weighing it up. I'm, I like the fact that I make more profit on the MDF side, but then again, I do like making open ear wardrobes. I think Sean does like it too, yeah. but then again, you've got the downside of matching all the grains. Once you've got over that and edging and getting those edging up and getting the edging up on the birch or edging your veneer. And you're, you're, you're on your way of just machining. It, it's nice. <clears throat> it, it's quite a hard one. If you haven't got a spray room, you probably want to, you probably like the veneer side and the birch side. If you, if you have got a spray room, then you probably be like me, you make more profit because the materials is less money. But then again, the, the finishing side is longer than the veneer and the birch, isn't it? So for me, it's profit, I'd say. MDF, I like the profit side because materials is low and I can make my profit, actually my labor in the spray room. Um, but I think, Sean, you prefer the other one, I suppose, or what do you prefer? What, what do you get more enjoyment out of? I do like, I do like the um, open air and the batch. Yeah. And then, then again, the, M, the MDF is a lot quicker. Yeah, so you, you prefer. Yeah, I mean, I suppose a job is a job at the end of the day. I mean, yeah. you, it's not like you might you might not get that much um, enjoyment out of making a wardrobe anymore because you've been doing it for so long. Yeah. It's not like your first one. Oh, it's lovely. I'm making it for myself. It's still a job, I suppose. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, MDF is MDF at the end of the day. It's not great material. It's great to paint and it's a good material to use for wardrobes um, and fitted furniture. Um, but it's not giving you the enjoyment levels of, say, a birch ply wardrobe or um, a veneered wardrobe. So there we go. I think that's it. I hope I haven't missed anything um, valuable that you need to know. But um, what I'm going to do um, is just quickly show you some samples. Sean needs to get back to work or have his lunch, whatever. Um, and we've been going on for a bit. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Um, let's go ahead and show you these samples. All right. So. We've got this little book, and this is um, Melamines, and it's from Egger. Um, I don't use melamine or laminates or anything like that or formica at all. I don't like it. Um, I don't like the cheapness of it. It's not my style whatsoever. There are people out there that do, and you can get this stuff cut for you. Um, and once it is, all you need to do is machine it, and it's so simple to machine and so simple to install. It's tough. It's solid. But I just don't like the cheapness look of it. I mean, fake grains, no, not me, or colours. Unless you may be just doing a one-off piece like this that's got like um, a stone effect or something like that, um, that's not for me. <clears throat> um, let's go over um, these bits. So, yeah, it's just a standard piece of MDF sprayed up. So it's an eggshell finish for us um, on all the MDF mostly or a silk. Um, and we get a really nice finish. I'm not sure if you can see the sheen, but yeah, it's, it's a nice shine, okay? And it's slight texture on it, but it's very good for an airless sprayer. These are all our oaks, okay? We like oak because it's got a nice gnarly grain on it, and it takes it takes that grey and the oil really, really nicely, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. It just highlights it. And for example, I'll show you one. Okay, so this is Ebony Osmo 3161. Um, this one is Mahogany and so on they've got about 20 or so colors i like osmo never had any problems and i know there are other brands out there um but you know we just stick with this um they haven't been edged by the way and um yeah so these are birches so this is the color that it comes naturally sort of like a pinky um light color um but it then could be sanded and um oiled in any osmo um that is the wrong one there that's oak near that <clears throat> there we go cheers um yeah yeah well, i kind of like this one to be honest i've done my whole mini bus in one of these osmos and the birch um i say mini bus my camper van conversion and you can see the edges um they come out really nicely um and that's what i like about birch and that is the selling point of birch um yeah so mdfs veneers openers birches and then we've come over here we've got to valcrum out which is a fantastic material it's a colored mdf effectively but just more dense and really good for um worktops floors funky one of pieces etc etc oh my box as well that's all made out of birch and that has been osmoed in a granite gray have i got a granite gray yeah with the, and it comes out a little bit different on the oak silk gray i think it's silk I think that is it. I think I'm going to leave it that, like that. Otherwise, I'm going to be going on and on. I hope you found it useful. Um, we've actually got to get back to some work and um, do some bits and pieces, get back to some paid work. If you have liked it, please like the video. It makes a massive difference. Subscribe as well. We're at 33,000 subscribers now. Um, if you can add to that, we're trying to get to 50 by the end of the year. That would be fantastic. Um, other than that, guys, take it easy. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your Sunday.